This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. So you very likely witnessed the attempted coup in Brazil, the ongoing attempted coup that's taking place right now in Brazil, at the hands of uh, Jair Bolsonaro's supporters. They are domestic terrorists, insurrectionists. They're not just vandals or rioters or disaffected electorate who are, have questions about the election integrity. That's not what it is. And there are Americans who have taken part in what is taking place in Brazil. There are influential conservatives like Steve Bannon, who is an advisor to the Bolsonaros. I'm gonna read a little bit from this Washington Post article from 2022, from November, months ago, months before this insurrection in Brazil. And then we're gonna play some video juxtaposing the similarities between what took place uh, two years ago January 6, 2021, and almost two years to the day what took place in Brazil, with, with Steve Bannon encouraging this all the way. A lot of the same talking points that, that were used around the 2020 election and the, the uh, eventual attempted coup, failed coup attempt, the insurrection here in the United States, the same talking points were used surrounding Brazil. The same things they're attacking, the, the voting machines, the election integrity, the government. But I'm reading from this article entitled, Trump aides Bannon and Miller advising the Bolsonaros on next steps. Some allies and advisors want the Brazilian president to contest his election loss to Lula. Others want a global fight over free speech. Reading from this article, while tens of thousands of supporters on President Jair Bolsonaro's camp outside military facilities across Brazil to protest his election loss, members of Bolsonaro's inner circle are meeting with advisors to former President Donald Trump to discuss next steps. What next step? You lost the election. The next step is to step down and let a peaceful transfer of power take place like any working healthy democracy. That's the next step. It's an obvious one. If you need an advisor and that advisor ends up being Steve Bannon, you're in a bad spot already. Brazilian Congressman Eduardo Bolsonaro, the president's son, has visited Florida since the October 30 vote, meeting Trump at Mar-a-Lago and strategizing with other political allies by phone. He spoke with former Trump strategist Stephen Bannon, who was in Arizona assisting the campaign of GOP gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake about the power of pro-Bolsonaro protests and potential challenges to the Brazilian election results, Bannon said. He lunched in South Florida with former Trump campaign spokesman Jason Miller, now CEO of the social media company Getter, and discussed online censorship and free speech, uh, Miller said. So, so notice this cast of characters in this thing playing out. You've got Donald Trump lost his election, uh, incited an insurrection against the United States. You've got Carrie Lake, who lost her election and is inciting the same type of response on a smaller scale because it's a state. And now we've got Jair Bolsonaro and his son Eduardo and the same thing is playing out. And the one key similarity to all of this is Steve Bannon, who in interviews years ago said that he's a Leninist and his entire goal is just to burn the whole system down. He's an agent of chaos. There's no fundamental ideology running through him other than chaos. Those conversations have mirrored debates unfolding in Brasilia, where Bolsonaro supporters are discussing next steps for his populist conservative movement, that that movement is facing a reckoning not unlike that of the American right after Trump's 2020 loss over how to sustain itself when its charismatic standard bearer has been defeated. The Brazilian right has some advantages heading into the new year when leftist former president uh, Lula da Silva will take office. While Bolsonaro lost, 
his party and allies made gains in Congress and governorships. Tens of thousands of his supporters continue to camp outside military bases in over 20 cities, some calling for commanders to intervene in the vote. And then here is where we see the, the, the fingerprints of Steve Bannon. Demonstrators have been photographed holding handmade signs reading Brazilian Spring and Brazil was stolen. Stop the steal, Brazil was stolen. In English, demonstrating the close ties between right-wing movements in the two countries. The phrases have trended on Brazilian Twitter several times this month. Brazilian Spring, quote unquote, was coined shortly after the election by Bannon, he and others say. He has since dedicated several episodes of his podcast to an election he's calling one of the most consequential political events in the world. And then finally, this. Some of Bolsonaro's advisors, including Bannon, want him to contest the results, an effort that would probably fail, but would encourage protesters. So look. While reading this article again, I'm realizing that this could have been written yesterday after the insurrection, the failed coup or the ongoing coup attempt in Brazil. And it, it, all of it fits. However, it was written months ago in the lead up to what is taking place right there. There are many similarities to what is taking place. They are breaking into Congress. They are occupying the, the, the presiding officer's chair. The same exact imagery that we witnessed on January 6, 2021 is again taking place, but in a different country at the hands, allegedly, of Steve Bannon and Donald Trump and Jason Miller and other ghouls, anti-democratic ghouls, who have one goal in mind, and that is chaos, and they achieve that chaos by putting hard right racist bigots into office who serve no purpose but to burn the system down. So let's watch a few of these. Here, here, here is them uh, uh, in, in the chamber. This is really the most stark for me uh, resemblance of what took place here at the Capitol, just blocks away from where I said on January 6, 2021. Watch this. The other thing that is so similar are the cell phone admissions to their crime while on the scene of the crime, holding their phones up, broadcasting from the event. It's all, it's like a blueprint. It's, it's these idiots like, what, what, wow, we wanna do a coup. We wanna coup this thing up. Who do we look to? Let, let's, let's take as our example a failed coup attempt and let's imitate that. That's what these idiots are doing currently in Brazil. Here's them invading the presidential palace. Um, I'm gonna show them invading and then we're gonna show the damage that was done. Some of the damage that was done, the vandalism type damage that was done is akin to exactly what took place here at the United States Capitol where they're, they're peeing and pooping in the halls, uh, defecating and desecrating uh, the, 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 not just the, the, that, the home of, but the workspace of the president. Uh, it is a bit much. Here you will see them breaking into their Supreme Court and destroying the Supreme Court. And again, en masse attacking their Congress. And Steve Bannon's fingerprints are all over this. The conservative populist movement across the planet that is uh, gaining speed is a dangerous one.
because one, I talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene being intellectually incurious. They are all en masse intellectually incurious. Their ideas don't resonate with the majority of people. So they wanna take power into their own hands anti-democratically, extra constitutionally in many cases, because their philosophies for life and for governance are dangerous and hurtful to the majority, but and they're in the minority, and because of that, they can't gain power, so you have to take it by force. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. Unfortunately, I don't see any other way to look at it. Fortunately for Brazil, they're dealing with this the way we should have dealt with this. Immediate mass arrests, put these people on trial and jail them to remove them as a danger to society. That is what's taking place in Brazil. Lula came out and said, there are certain facets of police that you cannot trust in the country anymore because they are in league with Bolsonaro. The same thing didn't happen here and should have happened here. Our United States Secret Service is compromised. Biden won't talk about things that are sensitive in front of them because he doesn't trust them. They lost text messages on one of the most historic days in the history of our country. Because many believe they were in on it. We've kid-gloved this for too long here in this country, and well, we'll bring it back, we'll finish it, talking about America. Our Attorney General, slow and methodical, great, but we can do methodical speedily. We can give these individuals what they are entitled to under the Constitution, a speedy trial. We're not doing that. I'd love to know what you think. Please call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you. See you on social media. I am at Dollamore on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, at Dollamore. And if you appreciate what I do, you wanna be a part of the team, help produce this content, click the join button below, see what's involved. For two, two, two bucks a month, you can become a channel member, or you can go over to Patreon, Check out what's available there, patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. I love you guys. I appreciate you very much. Again, it's a bummer to say that uh, things are going to get worse before they get better, but they will get better and they'll get better the quicker that we get involved and we get organized and we drown out their votes with ours overwhelmingly. I'll see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. Take care of one another.